Live from Rialto, California, Mark Flores presents to you the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast. Tonight's topic, Will Ospreay versus Ricochet. What to take away from it? And now, here it is, your host, Mark Flores. Hey guys, welcome to another great episode of the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Flores. Um, today's uh, topic is the most talked about wrestling match of the last couple weeks. Um, it's been going around like wildfire across social media. Uh, so much to the fact that even the mainstream audience, uh, people that are not really familiar with New Japan Pro Wrestling or the PWG uh, Super Juniors Tournament, uh they're actually into it now and it's pretty cool um tonight's uh pay-per-review wrestling podcast is brought to you by game swappers game swappers buy sell and trade your retro games and next-gen consoles that's uh ps4 and xbox one you could come into contact with game swappers via instagram at g-a-m-e-s-w-a-p-p-e-r-s that's s-w-a uh g-a-m-e-s-w-s-w-a-p-p-e-r-s game swappers buy sell and trade Keep in mind, guys, that if you do share the Mark and Andre show, uh, the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast, or Retro Collecting 101, uh, you'll be able to get 10% off towards uh, retro video games from Game Swappers. Um, or if you want to trade in your uh, your uh, your used video games, whether it's Super Nintendo, your current gen consoles, whatever you want to trade in, even action figures and whatnot, uh, you'll be able to get 10% more towards your trade-in if you mention and share my uh, p- uh, any which one of my podcasts. So anyway, guys, what I want to let you guys... Uh, tonight's to- uh, Today's topic on the pay-per-review podcast is Willow Spray versus Ricochet. Um, a lot of people have been giving this, uh, this match a lot of backlash because of what was going down through the match. And what was going down through the match was uh, a lot of choreographed spots... Uh, you could tell from the the whole duration. You could tell for the whole duration of the match that it was all choreographed from start to finish. But a lot of wrestling purists don't really enjoy seeing a choreographed match the whole way because it uh, it divides the line between it being real or it being uh, actually um, fake, in a sense. And I and I say that because. Um, when when wrestlers actually get into the match, uh, during the grapples, during the chokeholds and whatnot, they're actually uh, calling their spots, their next move that they have ahead. Um, yes, the finish uh, is actually predetermined. Um, they do the two wrestlers that go into the in a wrestling match before it actually do discuss the finish, but everything else is pretty much improvised beforehand. What well, Ricochet and uh, Will Ospreay did. Um, during this match was it was 100% choreographed from start to finish um from what i saw it was a bu- there was a bunch of excellent spots there was great verbal exchanges between the two um and it was very entertaining enough for the japanese crowd uh for the american crowd it would have been uh, as well as uh entertaining but to get the japanese crowd going at sporting events is extremely hard the 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 culture of the japanese audience is uh the japanese sports audience is uh relatively uh they're always very quiet uh little claps here and there but there's a lot of standing ovations i uh, no, there's a lot of ovations from time to time during this match um there's a bunch of pros and cons to having a choreographed match from start to finish um for those that don't know, let's go back and hit the history books real quick. Um, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Ricky Steamboat um, at WrestleMania 3, that match itself was 100% choreographed from start to finish by the Macho Man himself. And it's always been heralded as one of the best matches of all time. So I think by watching the Ricochet Osprey match, um, that it does deserve that same title. This is. In my books, this was one of the greatest matches I've ever seen in the last five, ten years. It's actually really something to look at when it comes to when it comes to the bar being set in the wrestling world now. I mean, the Super Juniors tournament is going to be the bar standard for this whole calendar year, going to every major wrestling promotion now, whether that's TNA, WWE, uh, back to New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, Global Force as well. So you got to see now is that this tournament itself is being put onto the main into the mainstream 
Um, highlights of the Will Ospreay Ricochet matches have been shared numerous times throughout social media. Um, this this match is actually gaining a lot of footing when it comes to uh, being uh, publicized to the mainstream. And once once wrestling breaks to the mainstream, that's when popularity hits an all time high. Uh, this is going to be one of those moments. It's not going to be. Um, like celebrity involvement in WWE type of big, but it is actually going to be bring um, uh, wrestling heads from WWE and TNA and the like, and it's going to bring them into this uh, to pay attention to the Super Juniors tournament. Um, but I could tell you that the template and the bar standard for for matches like this have been set for the rest of the other wrestling promotions. Um, this match itself was pretty incredible to watch. I mean, you could tell right off the bat that there was tons of tremendous work that was done in preparation for this fight. Um, it was very impressive. Uh, the the build the build up and the and the start before the match was actually pretty cool as well. But man, these guys were looking awesome from start to finish. I mean, there's a couple of there's a couple spots where um, there's a couple of miscues on the choreography, but um, to to have that just be the small blemish is, is okay with me because not every rest not every great wrestling match is perfect. There's always some spots where you're you just cringe and just pretend to not pay attention to it. And that was one of them. It was kind of a, a recovery roll up scenario where um where Will, Will Ospreay was trying to pick up Ricochet and it just didn't uh it just didn't pan out and then Ricochet ended up going with the uh the backbreaker instead. Um uh, the the sit down backbreaker where he's falling his back and he uses his two knees to initiate the backbreaker. Um, Ricochet spot on the outside at the eight minute mark of this match was incredible. Um, what Ricochet did, he did like this inverted spinning corkscrew, but what he used to actually give him that added spin was he actually was able to put his foot on the middle rope before he took off and use that to propel himself a little higher than normal. I thought that was incredible. I've never seen uh, a spot like that uh, in the WWE because I mean that's the that's the place where I mainly focus and put my attention to. But even even watching Lucha Libre, I don't I don't wa- I don't see any spots like that being done. Um, Ricochet, as you know, is Prince Puma in the Lucha Underground. But as of right now, to go into the Super Juniors tournament, they had to kill off his character and, and write him off for a little bit. So that's probably what ended up happening. Uh, but to to bring to that, even when he was in Lucha Underground, I didn't see any of the spots he's he's done. So I definitely got to look back and see because I I don't really pay much attention to the Lucha Underground as well. But back to the match, I mean, both wrestlers were using submissions I've never seen. Um, there's a lot of new ones that I haven't even got a name for them yet. I mean, there's a bunch of submissions that I've seen that... I, you know, there's this one where Ricochet's uh, has uh, Will Ospreay on the back of his on the uh, has his neck on his shoulder and and is pushing his legs down towards him. Um, I thought that was those these submission submissions that I saw in during this match were really incredible as well. Um, another thing to note as well is the overselling was a great added touch. I think it made the match seem very unique. Um, it made the match seemed like it was a grand epic where everything was was um, was magnified twice, you know, two times. Um, every time they would fall back on their back, they would reverberate, you know, they would, you know, move their back back up. Kind of like when The Rock uh, sold the uh, Stone Cold Stunner. He would move around and just oversell it. Um, it wasn't to that magnitude, but that's just a great example. It's just every time they would, every time they would get their, uh, neck, uh, their face, uh, head thrown on the mat, um, they would jump up and like pretend to faint back down and, you know, just excellent selling from Ricochet and, uh, Will Ospreay. I thought it was a really incredible match. Um, every bit of wrestling drama during this, uh, every bit of wrestling drama was used during this match. We're talking, uh, interactions, um, outside to the outside crowd with um, two spots happening on the outside for Will Ospreay and Ricochet. Um, the uh, Another thing to note as well is that there was a count out to uh, 20 seconds for them to get back into the ring. And they made it to the... They probably got into the... Um, into the uh, ring at the about 19 and a half second mark. So that was something to see as well. Um, one thing I could tell you guys is that this match is actually going to be talked about for a long, long time. Um, the, if you guys don't know already, uh, v- Vader, former WWF talent Vader, went to uh, Twitter to 
voice his opinion on this uh, on this uh, match itself. He didn't have much good to say. Uh, he mentioned that this match was too choreographed. There was too many flips. There was there was this. There was that. He was just be- being very nitpicky about this whole match. And for what I could tell you, a, a wrestler in the profession should be able to appreciate anybody putting their life on the line, putting their skills on the line just to entertain a crowd. Um, it, it's like when, you know, it's like when I myself play basketball and someone does better than me, I'll go up to them in, in a form of good sportsmanship and let them know they had a good game. You know, I expect the same uh, notion back. Um, you know, it's just standard sportsmanship. And for you to deviate from that standard sportsmanship just shows and uh, just you, you could tell that you're nothing short of being envious of this match. Uh, Vader um, probably hasn't wrestled in the last 10 years. If anyone could tell me otherwise, then perfect. But uh, Vader is pretty much on the outside looking in as far as wrestling goes. I mean, that's what most sports athletes that you know, wish they could still keep playing, always do. Um, And I I personally think that Vader is actually just being really envious of the whole situation. I mean, wrestling, wrestling at its core is an art form. For you to dislike what other, what someone else is doing during that time is, is, is ridiculous because you at one point were a wrestler I mean, this isn't to Vader. Like, you at one point were a wrestler that was really incredible. Really uh, a dominating heel. You, Your manager was Jim Cornette. It was just really incredible. You had everything going for you. And then and then all of, all of a sudden, you, you stopped wrestling for whatever reason. But for you to be on the outside looking in and to actually nitpick at the situation, at this most incredible match, that's just you being negative about the situation. Um Will Ospreay and Ricochet is going to be going up there with one of the great, you know, one of the great matches. Even outside of WWE, we're talking like all-time great matches. Um, a, a lot of people give it, a lot of people can say that choreographed matches aren't really good, but then we also have this match, and then we also have uh, Steamboat Savage at WrestleMania 3 to go back on, that these matches were incredible. Um even even a little bit of uh, The Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania 18 was pretty much choreographed from start to finish. I mean, both of those guys were masters at the craft. Hulk Hogan, The Rock, masters of the craft, knew what they were doing um, and knew the magnitude of the match. For you to try to improvise and try to uh, make a great match you know, solely from a source that comes out of improvisation, which is you know, like next level spirituality because it comes from a source that you didn't ever predetermine. Um, you're just doing it on the spot, that shows you that you have more trust in knowing you're going to do something right by having it choreographed from start to finish. And these guys, Will Ospreay, Ricochet, um, Steamboat Savage at WrestleMania 3, these are prime examples of it. Um, I I, I can't tell you, uh, I can't tell you, you know, from from a wrestling perspective, which mode is better. I personally... um, if I were to be in a in a wrestling uh, in a wrestling promotion as a wrestler, um, I would say I would want a choreographed match from start to finish. But the risks involved in that is where your spots don't correlate to where you are on the mat. There's tons of factors that come into play, whether you'll mess up or not, or what happens if that spot goes bad and then you start and then your mind draws a blank and you don't know what to do from there. You got to, you know, there's tons of, there's tons of consequences as far as, you know, there's tons of pros and cons when it comes to having a choreographed match, but the results do show your, your matches, if they're good, um, I mean, I've seen bad choreographed matches, but if it's a good choreographed match from start to finish, more than likely it's going to be one of those great talked about matches. So that's my two cents on the Will Ospreay Ricochet, um, ricochet match that i saw a couple almost a week ago but i wanted to get my opinion out there to let you guys know and you know i want to know what else you guys think feel free to email me direct message me however you want to do it but i still like enjoying talking wrestling here and there so be sure to uh, hit me up on the mark and mark and andre podcast at gmail.com if you have any questions if you have any any ideas for the show or if you just want to uh Uh, add a few conversation points to what we're talking about or any of the subjects on the past podcasts. Just let me know. 
This pay-per-review wrestling podcast has been bought, brought to you by Game Swappers. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade your retro games and next-gen consoles. That's Xbox One and PS4. You could come into contact with Game Swappers via Instagram. At G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. That's G-A-M-E-S-W-A-P-P-E-R-S. Game Swappers. Buy, sell, and trade. Keep in mind, guys, that if you do share the Paper Review Wrestling Podcast, or if you do share Retro Collecting 101, or if you do share the Mark and Andre Podcast... Be sure to let me know. There's discounts for you. If you do share it, there's going to be 10% off towards retro game purchases at Game Swappers. Um, or there's 10% more towards your trade-ins. Whether you have a stack of old Nintendo games you want to trade, simply give the games to Game Swappers and let them know you shared the podcast, show them proof, and then you got it. 10% off. Anyways, guys, I want to thank you guys for uh, listening to Paper Review Wrestling Podcast and my perspective on the Ricochet-Will Ospreay match. Have a good day.